here are some visualizations of those registers that I was just rattling off. The F mask is used again for bit masking off things from the R flags or E flags register on transition in. The L star just gets the RIP, so just jump to whatever that says to jump to. And then the syscall CS and SS for the transition into the kernel, so the syscall comes from these bits plus some math and the sysret for transitioning back down into user space comes from these bits plus some math. But that math is not exactly intuitive, so I wanted to just animate it out for you so that you could visualize what's going on a little better. So if you add the IA32 star MSR, bits 47 to 32 are what are used for setting the CS, the code segment on transition into kernel space. So if that happened to be just eight, then the CS would get exactly 8. 8 would be interpreted as a segment selector, like we've seen before, of 1, 0, 0, 0. So 1 means index 1 in the GDT, 0, GDT, 0, 0, privilege level, ring 0. All right, so CSS was defined as CS plus 8. So if CS was 8, then SS is 16. And that, again, is just interpreted as per the segment selector description. So this turns into a 2 here, and that is indexing into GDT entry 2. On the other side of things, going back from kernel space into user space, the CS register comes from bits 63 to 48, and it is those bits plus 16, so there's an automatic 16 added, so hex 10 added to that. Again, interpreted according to a segment selector, that would be index four up here. And then the interesting little bit here is that, well, what if this was set to zero? You know, what if the kernel accidentally misconfigured this and, you know, had it so that the RPL was set to zero and so ultimately it would be, you know, treated like kernel when you get back into what's supposed to be user space. So if we dig into the nitty gritty details of the sysret instruction, we can see that, you know, we go down here and it says if operand size is 64 bits, then the CS selector is those bits plus 16. Great. But then this is the interesting bit. So CS selector is equal to CS selector or three. So that's good. Basically the assembly instruction behind the scenes, the pseudocode that handles it, or really the microcode that handles it is making sure that always, as we're returning back to user space, it is forcing us into ring three. And again, that's just another one of these consequences of, you know, rings one and two never really being used. They just decided to say, you know what, screw it. We're not gonna make this generic for every single privilege ring transition. We're just gonna assume people are using ring zero and ring three. And likewise, a bunch of hard-coded values get set into the hidden portion, the cache portion of the CS segment register, including the DPL being set to a hard-coded three. So that means in reality, this is not 10 to 20, this is 10 to 23. It's being ORed with three, and so this is set to three. All right, and then SS was defined as the same bits, but plus eight instead of plus 16. And if we look at the pseudocode, we're also going to see that that has an OR3 in it. So this is going to encode index three. So what we end up with is a GDT that looks like ring zero code here, ring zero stack there, ring three stack here, ring three code there. Now this was a completely arbitrary example. I just picked some random values. We could have picked a value here of eight and that would have led to code here and it would have shared the ring zero stack with ring three as well. We could have pushed it even further up because if you go look at the nitty gritty details of these assembly instructions, you will see that the 32-bit mode version, has, so if this is a plus eight and this is a plus 16, well, they're actually in 32-bit mode, it would be a plus zero. So the, the code segment, if I recall correctly, in 32-bit mode is plus zero. So they would essentially have you know three contiguous things, some for 64-bit, some for 32-bit, but that's neither here nor there. So point is this was an arbitrary thing just to try and help you understand these you know, things that from a single slide are perhaps not intuitive that this math, this plus eights, plus sixteens, the only point of it really is to say, okay, well, we want the code and stack to be next to each other, the segment descriptors, and dear operating system, thou shalt create these segment descriptors next to each other in the GDT. 
All right, well, what about arguments? If you're making a system call from user space to kernel space, surely you're going to have to give some arguments. And yes, you certainly do have to give arguments, but that's not defined at an x86 level. That's up to each operating system to define itself. And consequently, I'm going to go ahead and leave that for the future operating system specific architecture classes where we, you know, reiterate all this kind of stuff you learned in 2001, but then, you know, we really drill down on, okay, what does operating system A, B, and C do with it? So stay tuned for system call arguments covered in the future OS specific classes.